one of the most challenging topics I think there is to talk about is how to excel as a creative employee in a business suit world. Um, and so that's kind of a, an odd title to a presentation. You know, typically we're talking about very concrete issues. Um, but in the world in which I operate, and in the world in which many of you operate, you might be that creative individual. Um, you also might be the person hiring that creative individual. Um, I am that, that individual. So one of the things that I wanted to start with is just kind of a brief overview about what we're going to talk about, but then I'm going to introduce myself after that, and you'll get why I'm doing it in that order in a minute. So what we're going to talk about today is if you are that creative individual and you're working inside of a corporate culture, how do you operate inside of that corporate culture? You know, you may have gone to art school, you may have gone to some sort of a, a have creative background where you're more used to operating underneath your own rules. Um, you know, I remember when I was in art school, I, I don't think I slept a whole lot. Um, I still think years later I'm catching up on the sleep that I missed. Um, you know, I remember uh, colleagues and, and people who I was going to school with, you know, presenting projects that were still wet because we worked until the wee hours of the morning. Um, so it's just a very different culture settling into more of a nine to five or eight to five sort of a day. Um, so we want to talk about when you want to conform and when you do want to be different. Uh, we want to also talk about what freedoms are appropriate to ask for and maybe what freedoms aren't appropriate to ask for. Um, but then we're going to get into more of an action plan of, you know, how are you going to communicate your needs, when are you going to choose the important battle, battles to fight, and how you can become invaluable because that is really the critical piece uh, to being able to, uh, I'll put it, survive inside a corporate culture. So most of you who have attended a webinar with me before know me. This is the, the picture that's, I think, in every piece of collateral that has my name attached to it. It's in every webinar um, invitation that you might receive. And so everybody typically thinks when they see the name of Sherry Weppel, they typically see me. I actually do look like this when they force me to clean up um, and when I have to present to customers. Right now I'm actually in one of our corporate offices. So I do actually look like this today. It's kind of, it's kind of impressive. This is who I actually am. Um, so I'm actually quite different than that corporate persona that I have to represent at times. And so that's why I'm kind of probably one of the more perfect people to present this topic um, because this is a, a challenge that I'm faced with every day. So you can see that I'm rocking my really cool giraffe with his sunglasses t-shirt on. Um, I believe at this point in time I probably was just coming from yoga or bar class. Um, yes, I do in fact have pigtails in my hair. Um, and yes, I did choose some swanky background that was on the outside of a, um, a print shop in my neighborhood because I needed a new profile picture. Um, and so this is kind of the world that I operate in. Just to give you a little bit more of my background, I do love the new term that they're coming up with, which is exennial. Um, you know, I did have that analog childhood, so I, I am dating myself a little bit. Um, I did come out with one of the first Star Wars movies. Um, I operated underneath um, a world that didn't have social media. I mean, we did have technology, we did have, um, you know, the internet when I was in school, but it wasn't nearly this all-consuming thing that it is now. Um, I do, however, have a very, very digital adulthood. Um, so I am an active social media addict. Um, one of the first things that I do in the morning after checking my corporate email, of course, is scroll through Facebook, scroll through Instagram, um, you know, see what's going on and connect to a lot of my friends who are on there. I do love hashtags. I love making up hashtags that don't exist. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. I also do re refer to myself as a recovering art major. Um, so like I said, my background is in art. I was an art education uh, major when I was in college the first time around. I taught art for about seven years before uh, moving into a corporate environment. So I definitely have lived in both of those worlds. Um, and I am that corporate executive who is typically walking around in Converse sneakers, much to my boss's May. So getting that little bit of background from me, I did want you to kind of have that so that you understand as you listen to the things that I'm talking about, I'm not that suit and tie person that you often see in photos. Um, yes, I can clean up. Yes, I can act the part when I need to. Um, but again, it's, it's choosing those battles and prioritizing when I need to be in which role um, and what it's going to really be, bring from a benefit perspective. So I chose to do this presentation a bit like Instagram because we are creative people, you know, and we do operate underneath um, imagery being more important than words at times. So as I found this image, I really loved it because 
you know, it was all about conforming. You know, it was all about, you know, your brain is trying to, to be creative and trying to, to think strategically and think creatively, and you're being dragged down by some of the, the corporate pressures and things that you might have to do. Um, and that can honestly be a challenging. Um, it's, it's a challenging world to live in because, you know, can often say that I'm less creative in high heels. Um, frankly, my feet hurt, and I'm more focused on the fact that my feet hurt uh, than whatever creative solution I might want to come up with. And, and that's kind of a, a joke of a topic, but it is serious at some point in time. We want to start to talk about conforming and when you should conform and when you should want to be different. Um, and there are definite, it's, a, it's going to be this ebb and flow, it's going to be this push-pull, it's going to definitely be this tug of war as we go through the session. Um, and really what it comes down to, if I could give you one key takeaway, as long as you promise not to close out the webinar after this, but the one key takeaway is that it's a balance. You know, it's a balance between what your customers might need, it's a balance between what your company might need, and it's a balance between what you, the individual, need. So as long as those three categories are all in alignment and everybody's winning at some point in time, that's what you're looking to do. So when you want to be different, it should be because it benefits the end result. So for example, if everybody's operating in PowerPoint and you want to use a different software, um, you know, if everybody's writing these 10 to 15 page reports and you want to do an infographic instead because you think that that's going to be a better way of representing your information. Um, you know, if everybody's flying all over to do these corporate meetings and you get the idea of let's just use our camera phones and let's just record them and let's put together kind of a quick blog where everybody is saying the things that they want um, from the comfort of their own home. If it's somehow benefiting those end results, then it's absolutely something to be different about. You know, if you're doing something where it's going to benefit that customer, so yes, you could use the tried and true methods that have been used for years and years and years, but if you have some crazy idea, um, some way to be different, and that customer is going to benefit in the end, totally worth it. Um, you know, totally worth opening up, speaking up, um, and bringing a new thought process to the table. That again extends to the company. Now the company gets a little trickier. Um, the company doesn't always see direct benefits to thinking differently. Um, there's a lot of corporate infrastructure that's there for a reason, um, and it's sometimes hard to understand what those reasons are, and they may not matter to you, but they may matter to somebody else, or they may matter to how the organization runs. So that was a little bit tricky, um, and that's where you really need to have a dialogue, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Things that you don't want to do is you don't want to conform when it only benefits you. You don't want to be different when it only benefits you. Um, so if you want to be different just for the sake of being different, that's not a good idea. Um, you know, remember that this is a job. You are employed. You, you have a duty that you need to provide some sort of capability or service to your organization. Um, and your desire to be different or creative really can't get in the way with that. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about that feeling of being caged, though, and I, I love this image, too, because there's times in which, um, you know, corporate culture or corporate infrastructure can make you feel caged. You know, if there's certain software that you're permitted to use, if there's certain hours that you need to operate within, if you have to physically be in an office or sit in an uncomfortable chair, I will also tell you that my desk chair is not like any other desk chair. It has sparkles on it. It makes me very, very happy, but it's not a corporate approved chair. Um, again, it makes me happy, it makes me more creative, there's some sort of benefit to the end result, the customer and the product, because I'm a happier individual sitting there. But see, that feeling of being caged is something that we do have to be careful about, because a caged person, um, you know, isn't going to be as creative and isn't going to be as expressive, and, and again, you're that solution solver, um, you know, you're that person who brings the solutions to the table, thinks outside of that box. Um, doesn't even recognize the fact that there is a box there anymore. Um, you need to not feel caged. Um, the things that you, you need to think about are freedoms. And, you know, what are those freedoms um, that are appropriate to ask for? So if you ever start to feel like you're caged, and I'm going to give you an example in a minute, um, you need to talk. You know, you need to talk to whoever your manager is, whoever's on your team. You need to have that dialogue. So a perfect example would be oftentimes I have to write something. Um, and I'm not talking about writing a, a, a storyboard or writing a script or anything like that, but there's some times where I really have to be creative, um, you know, and I really have to be able to um, come up with a really creative solution in a written format. 
Um, oftentimes, this might be a proposal response. Um, it might be an article or a white page or a deck like this. My environment in that kind of a setting is critically important. So if I'm sitting at my desk and if people are coming in and out and asking questions and if, um, you know, the phone is constantly ringing, I'm not going to be as productive. Um, it's actually going to take me probably four to five times longer um, in that environment than it would be if I kind of separate myself from that. So, you know, either I'll, I'll ask if I can work from home, um, you know, just for a couple of hours, just for a day to knock this out. Um, or I'll put the phone on Do Not Disturb, I'll put the music on, I'll close the door, and I'll be able to kind of create my own little environment in the office, which is odds are what I usually do. Um, need to be very, very careful from a freedom perspective of asking for things if you're feeling less productive, um, if you're feeling not as creative. Um, if you feel like that cage is there just for the sake of it being there, um, the way that we've always done it. Um, if for you, you don't see any perceived benefit to that cage being there. And again, that's where we get into that tricky situation of just because you don't see the benefit of it doesn't mean that that benefit doesn't exist. So it's important to ask for freedoms again when, and it comes back to the customer is going to benefit, you are going to benefit, the company is going to benefit. Um, but if you ever do feel controlled or, or caged, it's important just to have that kind of conversation and to have that dialogue, which is the next step that we're going to get into. So I love this photo. Um, I think this photo is hilarious. Um, I don't recommend wearing a beach towel. I don't know how they did that by the magic of photography, but I don't think it would actually act as a cape. Um, I think Mythbusters would definitely prove that as not plausible because it's too heavy. Um, but we wanted to talk about um, continuing around those freedoms of don't just try and be different. Um, you know, there's lots of people who, who want to be different for the sake of being different and being that kind of kooky, crazy, um, you know, creative individual, it doesn't really serve a purpose. Um, you know, don't ask for things because you have a personal preference. Um, part of when you start to become employed, you have to align to whatever that job is. That job may require you to be physically on site. That job may require you to be in an office environment, in a team-based environment. It's important to understand the components that are your job. Just because you have a personal preference to be able to work from home, if that's not serving the rest of the organization, if that's not working for your team, then it's not going to work at all. Then you need to start thinking about maybe if you need a different kind of an environment, meaning a different kind of an employment environment that's going to work better for you. Always avoid asking because everybody else can. Uh, that's the whole, I read an article that said um, people don't have desks anymore, people are standing at desks. I feel that, that this is because everybody else is doing it, we should do it too really, really bad advice. Uh, really start to think about the benefits again and what this is going to do for you. Um, you know, have all of those information and data points in your back pocket to be able to defend whatever your choice is because you want to be able to clearly communicate what it is you're asking for and why. And that why does become critically important and that why is often the piece that's missed all the time. You know, we have a tendency to stand and say this is what I want, period, end of sentence, and then be a little bit indignant if we don't just get an automatic yes as a response. We need to have those answers and we need to listen to other people's opinions as well. So that's this slide here and I love this slide because it, it really shows to me the dichotomy of these two types of personalities. So I am an avid, te avid texter. Um, I can text with one hand quite adeptly. I don't like my phone very large because that would make it very difficult for me. but. Uh, you know, digital communication is one of my preferred communication styles. That being said, there's times in which you need to communicate a message that you need to be very careful about who the receiver is. So again, I love this image because it was showing that texting over top of that meeting setting. So if you're in that corporate culture, that FaceTime can be critically important, critically important to your success and the success of whatever message you are trying to deliver. So you want to think about what it is that you're looking to request. Are you looking to request um, an alteration to the dress code, the working hours, the working environment, uh, the working hours? Are you looking for a new piece of software? Are you looking, it doesn't matter what you're looking for. You need to find that business case. So the business case can't be, well, it's better for me and I like it that way. The business case needs to be, I am more creative during these hours of the day. Um, and here, let me show you some of the things that I've created during that time. 
it needs to be, uh, I feel more comfortable in this environment and here's the end benefit that you're going to get. I need to plan out that communication. Um, you need to plan the conversation so that it's on the terms of whoever that receiver is. So if that receiver is more of that face-to-face -face type of communicator, then that's how you need to conduct the conversation. If that person is more of a written, then feel free to use written methods. But it's important that they're comfortable with the conversation and the conversation style more than you're comfortable with that. Um, you're the one who's going to be asking for something, so it's important to keep their perspective in mind. And the next thing is to just really, really listen. Uh, you're not going to win every battle, and that's what we're going to get to in, in a minute. You're not going to win every fight. You're not going to get everything that you want. And one of my best advices to any people who are, are new employees of ours is as soon as you can recognize the fact that you're not going to get everything you want all the time, the better and happier you're going to be. And any kind of a work environment is just like a relationship. There's give and take, there's wins and losses, there's finding a common ground and finding a middle ground, and that's really what you need to do. Um, it needs to be a middle ground in which you get to be creative, you get to do have fun, you get to provide maximum benefit to that, that company and that customer, and in the end, hopefully everybody wins to some extent. Now, I like this one as well because we really are talking about those battles and what are those battles that we want to choose. And what we need to do is we need to think about those battles instead of just fighting everything. There's going to be certain things that are just not worth fighting for. Uh, you know, and, and really that's why we talk a little bit about the method of making sure that you think about what are the benefits because if you can't come up with the benefits and it's not going to benefit the company and it's not going to benefit the customer, that is the key factor in the fact that that is not a battle that is worth fighting because you're going to probably lose. Um, and also it's probably not something that's worth asking for because it's really something that's focused around you and your, your specific needs and less around doing this job. Um, in the end, I kind of keep coming back to that as much as I might be this creative person and as much as I, I enjoy flexibility and and you know, different opportunities like that, my job is critically important. I need to be able to deliver on that job, and that is ultimately my main and sole priority. The rest of this is ways in which it's going to make me better, it's going to make me more functional, it's going to make me more productive. So you want to make sure that if you're fighting for something, that you're fighting for something that makes an impact. Um, again, if that's impact to the customer, that's impact to the company. Um, you also want to fight for things that you cannot do without. So there's going to be other situations where maybe it is all about you. You know, maybe it is something that you're looking for that has no perceived benefit to the company or the customer, but have an open dialogue about what that might be. Um, you might get a yes, you might get a no. It depends on what that conversation looks like. It depends on what everybody else's needs are, too. But you want to fight for things that you can't do anything about and also identify what you can give in return. So a perfect example might be um, a lot of people like to work from home. I personally don't just because home is very, very distracting at times. But a lot of people do like to work from home. One of the things that you can give in return is checking in more frequently, um, having a physical presence online, um, ways of replicating what's existing in the office and the reason why we come into the office, replicating that in a virtual, virtual standpoint. Um, those are things that you can give in return to make sure that everybody wins. Um, because in the end, everybody has to be comfortable with the situation. Uh, everybody has to be comfortable from a customer perspective, that the customer is getting what they want, the company is getting what they want, your team members are getting what they want, your boss is getting what they want, and that you're getting what you want as well. So it's important that as you develop whatever these freedoms are that you're looking for, whatever these exceptions are that you're looking for, that everybody wins. Everybody doesn't have to win all of the time, but pretty much in major decision points, everybody should win to some extent. And the last part is really about you. So I like this because, uh, you know, you really want to become that important person. The more you can become an important person and really that center cog because of the value that you provide, because of the things that you can do, um, the more you're going to find people maybe a little bit more accepting of the differences that you might bring to the table as well or the freedoms that you might be looking for because you're so critical and so valuable. So you want to, again, provide that optimal value. I know the, the presentation made it seem like this was all about you, but this presentation is actually all about what you can do for your company, um, what you can do for your customer, because that's your ticket in the door. 
you know, that's your ticket to freedom. That's your ticket to being a little bit quirky and being a little bit different. That's your ticket to, um, you know, maybe having the things that you need to be successful and to be creative. So you always do want to consider those business goals. You want to consider what everybody is going after. You want to have a pulse of what the company is looking to do. You want to be in alignment with that. Um, but you also want to be the creative person who's providing those solutions that maybe nobody else has thought of before. You know, then all of a sudden you're this really, really important player um, and you become that invaluable person. That does include um, providing those benefits that outweigh your differences, so making sure that you are providing that impact, but also knowing when to conform. You know, if we have one of our major customers in, um, you know, and I'm asked to present, that is not the time to be rocking pigtails in the office and walking in in jeans and Converse sneakers. Um, you know, that's the time to mind my P's and Q's, that's the time to present that professional look and feel. Um, you know, to, to be that, that corporate person and that corporate um, persona because that's what's called for in that situation. So I know when I need to conform and I know when I don't. Um, and I'm very, very careful and I, I tend to err on the side of caution if there's ever any kind of a question. So what is this all about? Um, just from a wrap-up perspective, we need to make sure that we, we conform when we need to do the job. So. We need to do any kind of conformance or any kind of alignment that's aligned to our job because it's important to remember that we're not in school anymore. Um, you know, when I kept all hours of the night and I turned in projects that were still wet and, uh, you know, I, I dressed probably pretty weird. Um, I was in art school, so those things were accepted at that point in time. That's not what it's like to have a job. You know, at that point you were in school, you were having fun. Um, when you do have a job, you need to conform in whatever way, shape, or form is needed to get the job done. Um, you need to make sure that if you're asking for, biz for freedoms, that there is some sort of a business case that's associated to that. So making sure that you have the rationale behind whatever you're requesting um, and that you've thought it through. You know, you need to make sure that as you're thinking it through and you're communicating it, that you plan out that communication. That you're not just simply saying, I need to work from home because I work better that way you need to be able to clearly demonstrate how you work better that way. You need to have a couple of proven track records of being very, very functional and giving them the opportunity to take it back if it doesn't work out. Um, you know, if it's not working for, again, the team and the company and the customer, then it's not really working for you either. You want to make sure that you're choosing battles that impact the business, um, battles that make a difference, battles that are going to change things for the good. Uh, improve things for everybody. And you want to make sure that if you're wanting to be different, if you're wanting to, to be that creative and that free spirit, you want to make sure that you're providing optimal value to the, to the company um, and to the customers. You want to make sure that you are that invaluable person who is bringing something to the table that no one else is. Um, and that's going to help buy you into having a little bit more freedom, a little bit more flexibility. Um, and maybe some opportunities that others might not. So at this point, I did aim to keep this pretty short, um, you know, recognizing the creative, creative mindset. I don't sit still long, so I can't imagine that any of you sit still long either. Um, this is my contact information. Uh, again, you know, this is a, actually a perfect example of the fact that this is not the corporate approved template. Um, this is not the type of template that I'm supposed to be using for these type of webinars, but it was a creative creative conversation which warranted a creative solution. So absolutely, if you have questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my Twitter handle is on there, so if you want to tweet questions, I'd be more than happy to respond back. If you have other ideas of conversations around this creative concept that we can have, we'd be more than welcome to, to have another uh, virtual chat together. So thank you for taking the time, and I look forward to hearing you all soon.